Good morning, my gorgeous friends on the internet. In today's episode, we are going to create a stunning 3D animation using Blender, and we're going to add it to our websites. Now, if you know nothing about this sort of stuff, the 3D world, uh, don't worry. I'm going to take you step by step, and you're going to be surprised how easy it is. Really fun. Before we get going, though, I want to say I have a special 15% off coupon code on every course on developedbyed.com. So if you're interested in learning more about web development, such as CSS and HTML to build your static website, or maybe something a bit more complicated like React, take a look, just apply the coupon code 15dev and you will get 15% off every course. Let's get going. For the simplicity sakes, we are actually going to get a model from a website because this will take a long time to build. And if you're not familiar with Blender, oh boy, this can take a year or two to actually get to a level where you can build something like this out. So for the, for the purpose of this video, we're just going to get a model that's already done and then we're going to customize it and add animations to it. So this one is from cgtricks.com and if you search uh, Tesla here, you are going to find this model here. You can just literally Google this and this is going to pop up. So go down here to downloads, click on it and download it. So here they ask for a price. I mean, you can put a price if you want and then your email and that should be it. You can click on this little button here and then view content and this is going to give you all the files. Now the one we want here is called Tesla Final Cycles. So click on download on that. Oh, also, you need to have Blender installed. So go over to Blender, blender.org, download it here, and we are ready to rock and roll. So that's done. Now we can open up and see what's going on. It might take a while because it is quite a, I wouldn't say a huge project, but it might take a while to load up. So here we go. This is our car. Now, if you don't know anything, what's this? What's this? What's this? Don't worry. I'm going to walk you through step by step. Okay, how do you move around in this damn program? If you hold the middle mouse down, you can rotate like that. That's pretty cool. Okay, so hold the middle mouse down, you can rotate. If you hold shift and the middle mouse, you can pan around like that. Okay, that is perfect. All right, so you can move around. If I want to go here, boop, 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 boop. And then you can scroll in and scroll out for the zooming. All right, so that's your basic navigation. So just play around with that a little bit, get comfortable. Very cool. If you want to select an object and maybe move it around, the way you do that is you click on it. Now you cannot drag on it. See, that just selects stuff. If you so I click on this and it doesn't work. So the way you do it is using the move tool. Now optionally, you can have this bar here popped open and then you can go here to move. And then as you can see, these arrows pop up. So the up arrow, left and right. So it's on X, Y, Z axis, basically. Why is my voice going away? Jesus. Uh, yeah, so that's one way of doing it. I don't like doing it like that. So I always keep it on the select box. And then whenever I want to move something, I just click on it and then click on G. So that's the shortcut. Click G and then I can move it around. Now, if I want to lock it to an axis, I can press X, for example, and then it only moves on the X. Or I can do G, Y, boom. Or if you want, you can just hit G. And then if you hold down the middle mouse, you can lock it to a, a certain angle while holding it down just like that. So whichever you prefer, I just like to do, and if you right click by the way, so if I right click, it jumps back. So it won't actually affect any changes, okay? So I like to do just G and X for example, and boom, I moved it there. All right, so that's one thing. And then you also have rotate, so you can do R for that. And then same, same thing, so you can lock it to Y, R, X, for example, to lock it to that, axes, R, Z, to lock it to that. So what we're gonna do for now is just click on this Tesla thing here and just hit delete, all right? We wanna get rid of that. Okay, so we are only left with the car. Now what I wanna do is basically add a plane, just ground to it, okay? Just a simple one. So the way we can do that is hit Shift A, all right, Shift A, or you can go up here to add. 
add mesh and then we're gonna do a plane all right so there it is and then we can press s and that's gonna let us scale it up or down like that so let's just go go mad all the way up there perfect so just something really big okay so now what i want to do is kind of compose this and make it look pretty so i want to pick an angle that i really like and then render that out so I want to move the camera to a certain location that I, I think it's look, it looks good. So we can click on this camera here and the way you can access the camera is on your keyboard you can hit the numpad zero. So if you hit zero, there we go, it's gonna get you in that angle. Okay, now to get out of this, if I just rotate my screen around, see if I rotate that, boom, it exits the camera mode. So how can I position this camera easily to my liking? Oh, and by the way, there's, it looks like there's multiple cameras um, in this project. So up here in the corner, let's just remove these 001, camera 002, and 003. And we'll just keep one. So let's select these and hit delete. All right, so we're just left with one. So again, numpad zero, that's our angle. So what we can do actually is hit N, and then go here to view, and I can do camera, to view. So if I click on this, now whenever I move this around, the camera also moves with my view. So I can just easily position it to my liking. So something like that. All right, I like that. So I'm kind of imagining this like my website. So I'm gonna have the logo here, I'm gonna have the nav bar. So, and I want this kind of at the bottom of the screen. So there we go, so something like that. Cool, and then I, Click it again, make sure you click it again, because when you click outside of it like this, you don't want the camera to move anymore. You want it to be perfectly in the position that you set it to. So now that we have our plane, I also want to have another plane basically here at the top to cover up this gray emptiness, because there's nothing really there. So the way we can do that is, again, same thing. We can do, uh, we can actually hold Shift and D and basically duplicate this, okay? There we go. And then I can kind of just move it to the back and rotate it. I'm gonna press R on the Y and rotate it to 90. So you can press R, Y, and then type in 90 and enter. I'm gonna do it again. R, R, Z this time, 90 to rotate it that way. Actually, I can just do RZ45 or minus 45, minus 45. There we go. So now I can view this angle again. I'm just gonna move it down like that, okay? And you can, again, kind of scroll out here and just move it to the back a little bit. Just play around with it. Okay, back to the camera view. That's what we have, perfect. Now this doesn't look too nice, does it? So we can switch over here at the top to viewport shading. And that's gonna give us a, that's gonna show us how the materials actually look like here. And then if we click on this one, the last one here, that's gonna show us the rendered view. All right, so how it would look actually rendered out. Now, if it doesn't look like this for you, go here to this ranch, uh, sorry, to this camera and switch it over to Cycles from Eevee. All right, so Cycles. So it might be on this by default. Uh, switch it to Cycles, and if you have a GPU, you can also switch the device to GPU Compute. That's just gonna make it much, much faster uh, to load up. So as you can see, if I move it around now, it does a pretty good job at it. Cool, so that's done. Now what we can do is actually start animating this. So as you can see, we have a little panel here. That's pretty cool. So let's say I want to make this animation 150 seconds. So what I can do is just, this is the timeline basically, so it lasts from zero all the way up to 250. So to just reduce this, I'm gonna bring it down to 150. And we're gonna render this out at 30 frames per second. So if one second is 30 frames, that I want to multiply it basically by five. So five times 30 frames per second is 150 frames. So zero to 150, all right? So move that like that. And perfect. 
So let's do the first time animation with the camera. So it's really simple. All we need to do is click on the camera here. And what I'm going to do is enable this camera to view again. Now what I want to do is this is basically my last shot, right? The animation is going to happen and then at the end, this is the final image that I want to see. So I'm going to scroll all the way to the end to 150. I'm going to hit Y. I, I should say, not Y. And then I'm going to add a keyframe. So we're going to do location and rotation. Okay, location and rotation. So what that means is if we move it to somewhere else and if we rotate the camera around, it's going to animate to it. So now, as you can see, put the keyframe there. So if I go all the way back to zero here, I can just zoom in holding shift and the middle mouse. I can position it to a different angle like that, for example. Just pick anything you really want. There we go. Something like that. And by the way, you can go here to the camera as well and you can change the focal length of this so that's here and i can also add depth of field which we're gonna get into in just a bit but anyway so let's say i find a nice position here like that and then i can hit i again and do location and rotation and that's it so if i hit space now take a look at that we have a nice smooth animation how cool is that maybe we can do a bit more rotation like that. I, location, rotation. Let's see. Right, that's pretty cool. So I'm going to mess around with this a bit. Experiment. Maybe you can have it twisted around like that. That would be pretty cool, actually. So maybe from this angle. Yeah, it's just really you can come up with some really cool stuff. Look at that. I guess you'd add another keyframe because that's quite a big rotation. Uh, let's just keep it simple. Let's do that. My voice is cracking so much today. Yeah, that's all right. That's pretty cool. Uh, you can also uh, grab these points and right click and you can do a keyframe type if you want. So uh, you can do Bezier, uh, Quadric and all of these different interesting easings. Let's try, let's try cubic. There we go. So, yeah, I mean, try out some of them and see if you like them. Okay, cool. So now that we have that, what we can do is do the same thing with all these items here. So maybe I can grab uh, the roof. So again, to move it, I can do G and Z to move it up. And then I can rotate it, R, maybe something like that. Okay, so again, I'm gonna do keyframe, I, location and rotation, just like that. Actually, let me go back. I'm gonna hit Control Z twice. Uh, at the end here, again, this is the finished position, right? Let's actually do it at 90 a bit sooner. I'm gonna hit I, location and rotation and then go here at the beginning. And I basically want to move this up. So let me just move it up here at 90 like that, rotate it. And then when I go here, I'm going to add I, location and rotation. Let's see. Well, that doesn't do it. Let's see why. So that's good. What we can do is just add it here to be honest, just move it up, rotate, and then add the keyframe, uh, location and rotation. And I'm just gonna grab this point now and just move it here at the beginning, like that. So let's see. So that's pretty cool. And then I can basically apply it to the rest. So if I wanna do the wheels, I'm gonna hit G. Let's do G, G, Y to move it to the side here. Like that. Maybe I can rotate it on the Z again. Uh, maybe not on the Z. 
Meh, maybe just even like that. And then... Actually, at the beginning, always, always make sure to add location and rotation at the beginning. So let's click on that. Also save your file, because sometimes it might crash. So let me hit save. There we go. So add the keyframe first, and then do your animation. So I'm going to just, I don't know, just move it out. And like that. Okay, cool. So I'm going to hit I. Location, rotation. And then just move this, whoops. So just click on this one and move it to zero. And there we go. So you can just add stuff like that, which makes it look really cool. All right, so experiment, move things around, grab certain bits and see what you can come up with. But that's essentially it. So that's the whole animation. So now to export it, uh, we can pop out of this view. I'm gonna turn on camera to view is we can head over here, make sure we have GPU compute on, and then here on this printer, we can do 1920 by 1080, we can do the frame rate, we can set that to 30, and then here the output, you can select a maybe the downloads folder, hit accept, and then file format will pick FFMPEG video, okay? And that's it. So after you have that selected, you can go render and render animation. And that's gonna, it's gonna be quite slow. So it might take you 10 hours, but it's worth it. I'll be back once it's rendered out. It's really cold here. Oh, that's my cold breath. Okay, done, rendered out. Let's take a look. Boom, how cool is that? Awesome. So to it's, it's just a video now, really, so it's, it's not really complicated to add it to a website. So open up Visual Studio Code. Um, let me show you what I went through here. Uh, just literally drag the video in, right? Car MKV here. Uh, added a bit of text. So just a Tesla, a H3, and the video. And I added autoplay and muted to it. And that's all you need to do. And what I also did was just added GSAP for a little animation here. Let me show you the CSS as well. So for the CSS, literally all we need to do is add a position absolute and then make it full screen. So I added width 100, uh, stretch it out, add a Z index one. And then on the H2 and H3s, I just added a Z index two so I can put it on top of the video. If I have a nav, if I have a logo, I do the same thing, just add a Z index Put it over the video and then the pointer events none so it's not clickable and then no one can touch it and then in the script literally just an opacity zero to opacity one we're fading in the text so in the end the whole finished product looks just like this boom awesome and as you can see everything is still clickable we cannot click on the background so that's really cool and the file the whole animation is like a megabyte anyway so it's not really bad um, you can compress it further drag it into DaVinci or Premiere Pro you can optimize it lower the quality if you feel like it's too much but yeah that's it how simple I know a lot of you are like ah oh, I thought this was 3JS damn it it's not I tried it with 3JS and it's a billion lines of code so I think this is much nicer and much simpler and at the end, people won't know anyway if you're using 3JS or you did your animation in Blender. So anyway, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Let me know if you want to do more Blender stuff. I'm like, ever since I started doing Blender stuff uh, with Maxine, we're like, oh, we don't like coding too much, to be honest. This is so much more fun. Uh, so yeah, thank you. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace, kawaii. I'm cute Japanese boy.